Good evening, my dear fiends. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Monster Movie Night. I am your host, Bobby Gam Monster, your creepy old curator of Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum, and my co-host, Boris T. Buzzard. <laughs> what a chilling night it is. Uh, we have only ourselves to be alone with in the dark. <laughs> right, Boris? And imagine if you didn't have anyone else to be alone with in the dark. It would be chilling indeed. Right, Boris? <laughs> and in fact, tonight's feature is called Alone in the Dark, starring Jack Palance. Martin Landau and Donald Pleasance in a lovely little tome of a film where psychopaths escape from the mental institution <laughs> and terrorize their psychiatrist. Oh, what a lovely, lovely, insane little movie. <laughs> so my so my dear fiends, let us go right over here to the old haunted uh, internet keyboard and key it in the uh, Alone in the Dark 1982 Jack Palance, Martin Landau and Donald Pleasant. <laughs> so now let's tune in to the old t uh, internet TV. Hmm? <laughs> Did your mama tell you not to turn on the TV at night? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching you. <laughs> Hello, Mom. Hello, Preacher. How are you? I'm fine. Want to see the menu? No, I think I'll just have a usual. All right. Kind of slow, isn't it? I hear they're calling for rain. I will cause distress unto men, for they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall run out as the dust, and their flesh as dung.
I'm uh, Dan, uh, Dr. Daniel Potter. I had an appointment to see Dr. Bain this morning at 10.30, but my car broke down. I couldn't get to a phone. I hope I can still see him. I'm afraid you can't see Dr. Bain. Oh. Um, well, do, do you have any idea um, when I might be able to see him? You can't see him at all. Why? Isn't he here? No, he's here. Oh, then, um, do you have any idea when he'll be free? Leo's always free. Is he free now? He's always free. Then why can't I see him? Because he's invisible. Then we'll have a winner. Melody was a receptionist before she was admitted here. It's good therapy for her. Well, thanks for coming to my rescue, anyway. No problem. I felt the same way when I first got here. Everything seems turned upside down, but when you see the results, Leo, it's, I know. it's scumbag. His work is really incredible. Oh, it's like a miracle the way he gets through to people everyone else has written off. His methods may seem a little bizarre, but they work. I've been here since Leo founded the hospital six years ago. Feels like forever. Have you actually met him yourself? Uh, no, no, just on the phone. But I think uh, we're going to understand each other. Well, be prepared for anything. He's very unique. Leo? This is Dr. Potter. I know. I know. Great to see you, Dan. Oh, Leo. <laughs> Thanks. So now, tell me, what are you experiencing? Well, actually, I haven't had much of a chance to react yet. I was a little amused by your receptionist, though. What happened? Nothing. It was just that when I asked if I could see you, she said you were invisible. <laughs> To Melody, I am invisible. Sounds like Bane is completely off the wall. That's quite possible. He does get results, though. Maybe that's your problem, hon. What's that? Maybe you've got to be a little crazy to be a good shrink. Dad. Oh, God, Dan. All right, I'll just make another one. You know, a little bit of crazy glue, and you'd never know this was broken. Better get epoxy. What's the matter with crazy glue? Well, you could get your fingers stuck together. Then you'd have to go to the hospital. Oh, come on. <laughs> get serious. I am serious. I read about it in the National Enquirer. When do you read the National Enquirer? Wait a... Wait a minute. Will you wait a minute? Where does she read the National Enquirer? Don't ask me. I can't keep up with her. What is this thing, anyway? Matching flower vase. So, what about these guys on the third floor? Guys on the third floor? Oh, I, I don't know. I haven't met them yet. They sound like a pretty rough bunch, though. I don't see why you just can't have a nice office and treat neurotics like everybody else. Why? Well, guess I just prefer psychopaths. What else can I say? As far as I'm concerned, those men on the third floor are voyagers too. But the state wouldn't let me keep them here unless I had maximum security. 
I, I said, no, no way. I'm, I'm running a haven here, not a jailhouse. So we have this special security system uh, on the third floor only. No bars, all run by electricity. Aren't these men still, still potentially violent? What do you expect? It's a violent society. Anyway, they've passed that point on their journey. They're working through other things now. Actually, what I feel about all this crap is they're better off in there. Too scary outside. They wouldn't survive. I say, Ray. This is Ray Curtis. Dan Potter. Ray is the floor monitor. Hey, Ray. How you doing? Okay. How you doing? Doing all right today. So far. Hulk set off the window alarm again last night. Oh. <clears throat> but uh, aside from that, uh, everything is cool. Good. Well, good luck. Frank Hawkes. Frank Hawkes was a prisoner of war some while ago. So it's important for him to feel that he knows the way out wherever he is. Hello, friends. This is Dan Potter. He's going to be helping you along for a while. Where's Harry Merton? Dr. Merton had to leave us to go and help people somewhere else. Dan, this is Ronald Elster. Hi, Ronald. Colonel Frank Hawkes. Frank. This is Byron Sutcliffe. Hi, Byron. Byron used to be a minister. He's very deeply into his own space just now. Our friend over there is John Skagg. That's the leader. Oh, yes. John doesn't particularly like to show his face to strangers. Well, Dr. Bain here has, has told me how much you all admired Harry Merton. Um, unfortunately, he did have to leave, and I'm here now. Well, I guess I'll see you later. Dr. Potter! Trails. I hear you, Frank. Potter. Killed. Harry. Merton. to kill us. He that smiteth the man that he die shall surely be put to death. We'll kill Potter when he comes back. Not here. Where? Outside. We, we can't get out. We'll get out. When the time is right. Dan, I really wish you'd pick up Tony. Now, you know this is going to be a tough day for me now. She can get a taxi at the airport. She'll be fine. Well, I just don't know if I can handle it by myself. That's all. Well, come on. I'm sure you can. Are you finished with this? Yeah. You know that the last time you saw Tony, she wasn't feeling very well. No fooling. All right. But look, I've talked to her on the phone, and I've spoken to her doctor. She's fine. She's probably 
better off now than she was before the whole thing happened. Well, I hope so. Breakdowns can sometimes be very cleansing. Why don't you give her a chance? She's a great girl now. Don't you think you better get dressed for school? As soon as I finish. Oh, when might that be? As long as it takes. Well, speed read, you know. Well, you better start. Free yourself up, Dad. Come on. Loosen yourself up. You're not a pain Whitney anymore. We don't lock people up here and fry their brains with electricity. Yeah, here, sit down. Sit down. People here aren't called patients. They are voyagers. Uh, do you mind uh, if I smoke? No, no, not if you need to. Need to? <laughs> I don't need to. I, uh, I want to. <laughs> Oregon, Cincinnati. It's a great herb. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you see, Dan, what a medical gang calls schizophrenics are people who have taken a journey into the inmost reaches of the psyche. Most psychiatrists haven't the guts to follow them there. But I believe in you, Dan. I believe in you. Always remember what the Hindu mystic said. Mind moving fast is crazy. Mind slow is saint. Mind stopped is God. Ray, this is a, this is quite nice, quite nice. Thank you. Have a seat. Sure. Would you uh, like some herbal tea? Oh no, thanks, no thanks. That's cool. Doctor Potter, Hawk says that you killed the last doctor. So they're going to kill you back. Okay. So what are you going to do? Nothing. See, what you described to me is actually pretty common among people in treatment. Now, a man like Hawks, I mean, he's got a problem. <laughs> Paranoia. Mm. He can't accept the fact that Harry Merton would leave for another job. Yeah, well, you know, that all sounds fine in psychiatry class, Dr. Potter, but... I am telling you that these guys are very, very intense, man. Check this out. Electricity, man. The only thing that separates me from them is electricity. Byron. Hi. I need a match, Doctor. Now, you know you're not supposed to have matches, Byron. Well, Leo lets me have them. Then you should go and ask Leo. I will send thy anger upon thee, and judge thee according to thy ways. And recompense upon thee all thy abominations! Hey, preacher, my man. Don't you call me preacher! Hey, now listen you to me, man! Oh, 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 oh. Don't you wait and talk about this later, okay, Byron? The end is come, it watcheth for thee. <laughs> Fucking maniac. And my intestines come up out of my body and they wrap around the bed and they grab me by the throat and try to strangle me. And... Excuse me. Leo, I need a match. A match? Oh, sure. Just keep the pack. And then I have to say the Lord's Prayer backwards three times or else my body turns into porcelain. Uh, well, Mavis, here's what you do. Um, 
the next time you, you feel your intestine coming out, just move your hands uh, in front of your face three times, like that. Yes, and then the intestines will stay inside and you won't turn to porcelain. Uh, I promise. Thank you, Doctor. Oh. Oh, excuse me, Mary. Somebody get him another shirt. I'll take Please. care of it, Leo. Leo. Hmm. Can I ask you what it was that you just said to him? I told him uh, if he didn't stop all this nonsense, I would hoist him up and cut him in half. <laughs> Sometimes you have to be forceful with them, you know. a great house and you got lots and lots of land that's really really good you got any rastafarians around the who you know reggae rastafarians i'm into music now i'm really into music when i was there i started playing the drums i met a guy he's a guitar player no, so wait, when I got no, wait, wait, no. wait hold on okay let's take your stuff inside and i'll show you to your room and then you can tell me about everything okay sorry i'm just excited you no know? don't be sorry i'm excited too come on Excuse the mess. Looks great. Where's Lila? Well, oh, she's at school. She'll be home around three. Does she know I'm here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's really excited. You can put your stuff in this chest if you want to. So? Hun. I'm fine, really. I'm fine. There's no problem. You look great. Thanks. Hey, there's a dynamite band that's playing Springwood this weekend, and I was thinking about taking you and Danny to see it tonight. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know about Dan. <laughs> if he doesn't want to go, we could drag him along. Huh? <laughs> we could go single. I'm really glad you're here. You know. Yeah, I know. Frank? Frank, do you have a minute? I have years, Doctor. You were pretty close to Harry Merton, weren't you? Why? Well, Harry said you were. Have you been in contact with him at all since he left? Why should I be? Well, if you're friends, you want to stay in touch. Ah, uh, if we were friends, I suppose we might. But you know where he is, though. Some place in Philadelphia. Look, uh, I find this line of interrogation fairly uh, meaningless. What is your point? There's no point. Just wanted to touch base. That's all. Oh. Mm. You know, you shouldn't take Ray Curtis too seriously, Doctor. He's not very reliable. Well, why do you say that? He's too high strung. And that doesn't mean that he's a bad person. That's just his trip, like Bane says. Fatty's trip is to rape little girls. A preacher likes to set fire to churches. That's his trip. Unfortunately, 
He does it when there are people inside. I'm here because I enjoy the, the social life. There are no crazy people, Doctor. We're all just on vacation. I hear that uh, the Haven's really far out. No, 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 the Haven is not far out. No, tell about the bleeder, hon. I haven't seen my sister in over six months. Oh, come on, what's, what's the bleeder? We rushed through dinner to go to this God knows What's the Place. bleeder? You remember in the newspaper about three or four years ago, this guy went around strangling everybody. When he yeah. did, he got a nosebleed. He's got him. Ooh, he's there. Yes, yeah, so he's got this other guy. He's like a 400-pound child right. molester. Now, will you stop it, ah. please? I don't want to talk about my work. I'd like to talk to my sister. Honey, she's going to be here for a week. I can't believe you guys are I wouldn't before. drive this far to see my family. Yeah? Yeah. You're really gonna like them. I mean, they have a really good Come reputation. On. They're called the sick fuck. Oh, my oh, we God. Oh, my God. Come on, on. on. they're really Are good. They're loud. Of course they're loud. You they're can't loud. appreciate it unless it's loud. Yeah. Hey. How you good? Uh-uh. Hey, it's my brother. It's 18 bucks. I made the lights go out. Officials at the Farewell Nuclear Power Plant continue to deny rumors that the power failure is due to a malfunction in the nuclear reactor. Wow, well, they're the lying. The I mean, this is another three-mile island. Vice President of we gotta Columbia get out of here. Light has stated, the blackout is either an act of sabotage or an act of God.
I have stood behind you, man, all the way down the line. I mean, that is the truth, man. I am your friend, all right? Stay away. Stay away. Get back. Come on. Hey, man, look, look. Jesus. Bond seems to be working okay. We were watching TV in the kitchen. Then a little while later, the TV and everything just went dead. I don't seem to be able to get through to the Haven. You know, I hope they don't fix the blackout too soon. It's sort of fun. <laughs> Generator conked out and the bleeder and a couple of the others just waltzed right out of here. Jesus. Who, uh, who did they kill? Oh, the guard they had and, uh, Ray Curtis? Bride and a doctor. Not Bane. No, no, Larkin or something like that. Well, where are the men now? All we know is they stole a car and, uh, they're wearing their hospital outfits. They shouldn't be too hard to catch.
through Sunday. Pot again. You know it's no good for you. <laughs> well, why don't you just go back to bed and we'll be more quiet, we promise. Aunt Tony will tuck you in. Good, good night. night. Good Afraid of the dark? Sometimes. Aren't you? No. Not ever? No. Maybe when I was a kid. I don't remember. <laughs> when I was a little kid, I was scared to death to be alone in the dark. I always knew that there was something that I couldn't see that wanted to get me. In the closet. Or outside the window. But the worst thing of all was the thing under the bed. What kind of thing? I never knew. But I was terrified if my foot hung over the end of the bed, a hand or a claw would come out and grab me. So I would wrap myself up in the blanket and make sure nothing stuck out, and then uh, I knew I was safe. You must have been a pretty mixed up kid. Yeah, maybe. Interesting film, eh, my dear fiends? <laughs> How would you like to be alone in the dark with those guys, huh? <laughs> well, my dear fiends, I thought I'd bring out from the museum some masks of ours. This one is actually very reminiscent of the old Ben Cooper masks. You remember those for Halloween, the plastic ones, where it would sweat your your face off and you could barely see the through the eye holes <laughs> well this is a fun one this was bella lugosi's igor you remember him as igor in uh in the uh the uh, son of frankenstein and ghosted frankenstein uh indeed that was a very wonderful part that lugosi did it was almost equal to his dracula Right, Boris? <laughs> in fact, he played this more than he played it, played Dracula uh, in the films. And these, these little masks are not that expensive. Uh, for a budget like mine, especially in the museum when times are hard in, in this day and age, uh, they're quite affordable. So, you know, you look them up online. They're, it's from Retro Agogo. And. But now for a little more expensive mask, even though some people call them creepy cheapies, <laughs> my dear fiends. Well, for a budget like mine, they're anything but cheap. They are creepy, though. And let's see if I can... Can you help me, Boris? Thank you very much. I know this white hand of mine and the glove just is no good at all. All right. Thank you very much. You're so helpful. Anyway, this one is by Jordu Shell. 
and uh, some people call him the maestro of masks and it's 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 uh it's beautifully done i got it from trick-or-treat studios and you guys i'll put it up here where you can see it a little bit better and the paint job is excellent and uh he, he he's a uh, well he's a, a monster and a half isn't he <laughs> and for a, a nice modest budget these these are excellent to have and of course you can see that i've collected quite a few of them uh, now over the years uh with trick-or-treat studios right boris <laughs> so my dear fiends if you get a chance run right out and get one of these and if you want to know how to get one uh through me just email or message on facebook or what have you and uh we'll get right on that <laughs> so now let us get back to tonight's feature alone in the dark Some kind of asshole? <laughs> Think, huh? Um, no, it's nice. Nice? Yeah. I mean, don't you think it's incredible? Uh, it's good. Don't you think it really says something? Yeah, it, it does. Yeah. It's good. It's very good. You really want to go to this demonstration? Yeah. There's going to be state troopers there, you know. Well, you got to stand up for what you believe in, you know? Yeah, I know. Okay, so, how about a poster for me? This one is for you. Why do you see mine? Okay. I have a telegram for Dr. Potter. Well, he's not in. I'll take it. I may only give it to him. Well, I'm his wife. I think you give it to me. When will he return? I don't know. Sometime this afternoon. Do you want to come back later? You can rest assured I will. Believe that guy? 
weird. Where did I get these guys from? <laughs> okay, Could you put some rosin on that boat? Everybody and, and we'll be through as he's, soon he's as we can. Number. Has anybody seen David, Lisa, or Sunshine? I love the sunshine. Shut up. Maybe you can yeah, help us. Yes, Judith, possibly. He loves you. I know he loves you. Tina, 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 Okay, that's it. Thank you, everybody. You've been really helpful. You can go. All right, children. There's a barbecue on the lawn. Is that the Sibelius you're playing on there? Bye-bye, <laughs> children. Bye-bye, Fred. Bye, Perry. Bye, Mavis. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. So we're still missing six, Leo. Not counting the men from the third floor. Those men were moving along so well. Now I suppose the authorities will close the whole operation down. They don't understand. The men's violence is a cry of pain. But nobody hears it. The three men they murdered heard them, Leo. Yeah. What exactly are you trying to say, Dan? Don't you think that you've lost sight? They've killed three people, Leo. He has a point, Leo. All right, they're crazy. Isn't everybody? Where's my mother? She's not here. She asked me to take care of you till she gets back. Are you a babysitter? That's right. Where do you live? In Springwood. Your mother said we should go up to your room until she gets home. I don't want to go to my room. Come on, cutie. Call me Judy. We could have a lot of fun up there. How come my mother called you instead of Bunky? Bunky wasn't home. You got paper in your room? Why? I'll tell you in a minute. You got scissors? I can show you how to make any kind of thing in the world out of paper. Finish your milk and we'll go upstairs, okay? I promise I won't try to hold your hand again. Excuse me, officer. Yes, please. I'll make a phone call, please. It's my turn. I've been waiting here for an hour now. I told you. You'll have to wait your turn like everybody else. No, you don't understand. My little girl's coming home from school, and there's nobody there to meet her, and I'd like to call my husband. He's a doctor. Look, lady, everybody's <laughs> got problems. You should have thought of that before you broke the law. Oh, what do you mean, Ma? Come on! Oh, I mean, when this plant blows up, your ass is going to go with it, you know? I mean, your kids are going to melt down. This is hey, really... On, I can take care of myself. Okay. I'm ahead of you for the phone. You can have my place. Yeah, I should go to my place, all right? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, let's it. go. Make it quick. What, did he get hit by a cop? Mm-hmm. Forgot to duck. <laughs> my brother's a doctor. Maybe he should check it out. No, no. That's okay. Oh, really? He should check it out. Get home for a while, so we're a little worried about Lila. 
Oh, well, I'll go see how she's doing. Great. Thanks. Lila? Lila's fine. She's napping. I uh, didn't want to wake her. Oh, that's great. So, uh, do you want me to stay until you or Mrs. Potter get back? If you wouldn't mind, uh, it'll be a couple of hours. Oh, that's no problem. Well, I'll, I'll see you when you get back. I'll see you. And thanks, really. That's okay. Bye. Bucky? What took you so long? We've only got an hour now.
this matter now? Did you hear that? What? I heard a noise. Oh, come on. Uh, come on, I said stop it. I heard a noise. What kind of noise? I... I think it came from that closet over there. Well, maybe it's the cat. You don't have a cat. So what am I supposed to do? Well, look in the closet. And then you'll be happy? Yes. Do you want me to do anything else? Do you want here to get his burger dress again? Please. Okay, okay. I mean, this is ridiculous. Sweetheart, there's nothing to worry about. Just a scare. Uh, Detective Barnett, this is my wife, Mel. Oh, uh, what happened? One of the men from the Haven who escaped was here. What? Don't worry, a lot of fine. He didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. He, he was here, he, wasn't he? Excuse me, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Actually, uh, Lila said he was very nice. He he showed her how to make some things out of paper. Then he went away and she took her nap. Oh, well, that's just great. Well, uh, actually, I'm, uh... You must have come right through the front door. I'm pretty relieved that that's all that happened. He didn't touch her. He didn't do anything. He, oh, why was he here, then? Well, I suppose he wanted to talk to me. He, he must trust me. What do you mean, that... talk to you? You can have a tea party. What do you Sweetheart, mean, talk to you? Hey, 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 good... uh, Tom, this is my brother Danny. Danny, this is Tom. Hi, Tom Smith. Hi, how do you do? Tom's the guy that gave us a lift home from jail. <laughs> Lila. Howdy. As you can see, he literally got busted at the demonstration. <laughs> well, looks like you all have your hands pretty full. I uh, guess I better be going. Now, hold on. Uh, we told Tom he could stay for dinner. He's a real nice guy. Yeah, he is nice. He's the guy at jail who gave me his turn so I could call you. I wouldn't mind having another man around here tonight. Sure. That's fine with me. Fine. <laughs> Sir, we found two set of footprints going out the back of the house. Then we lost him in the woods. Has a girl's car ever turned up? Nothing girl, so far. Uh, nobody seems to know where Bunky is. Oh, my no, God. Oh, come on, Mel. She's probably out somewhere with her boyfriend, as apparently he did come by to pick her up. Oh, Jesus, her mom must be going out of her mind. Sorry to butt in, Miss Potter, but your husband's probably right. Just under these circumstances, we have to be a little more careful about things that ordinarily wouldn't amount to anything. If you should hear anything funny, just give us a call. We'll get somebody out here right away. Okay. Wait a, wait a minute, Jim. Um, we, uh, we already have an extra place set for dinner, so uh, why don't you join us? You can handle it, can't you now? Sure. Well, ah, come on, we make some pretty good food around here.
Why do you suppose Dan isn't answering his telephone? Maybe they went out. Where would they go to? You'd think in the circumstances, the restaurants would all be closed, wouldn't you? You're probably right. You don't think he's deliberately not answering the phone because he thinks I'm trying to reach him? I wouldn't rule it out, Leo. He was being kind of hostile this afternoon. Maybe he's acting out. Do you really think so? Well, I wouldn't take it personally. He was very tired. Yeah, I grew up in San Diego. Uh, grew up sailing boats. I got interested in racing tactics. And then I uh, went to USC and majored in geology. <laughs> So that's when I first started getting interested in wind power as an alternate energy source. And it turns out an old buddy of mine from Springwood had the same idea. So uh, here I am. Making windmills. Yeah, that's right. It's better than tilting at them. <laughs> so you can actually run a house off a windmill? Well, that depends on the needs of the house and how much wind you get. How much power does the average setup generate? Hmm? How much power does the average setup generate? That sound, didn't you hear that? Yeah, I heard it. Well, what was it? All right, I know, uh, I know that we're all a little on edge here tonight, but let's take it easy, okay? Uh, I mean, this is an old house. There are all kinds of sounds that are in and out of this house, and if we're anxious, we're going to start to imagine that we hear things that aren't even there. It's like my, my mother. She hears sounds coming out of the TV. Everyone hears sounds from the TV. Not when it's turned off. Is that normal or what? Normal? I don't know what's normal anymore. Uh, now, what was that? Excuse me, folks. Don't you think we should call somebody for help? Take it easy, Mrs. Prada. There's plenty of time for that. Are you sure you don't want a little help looking around out there? No. Just wait inside. Can you see anything out there? No, ma'am. It looks pretty quiet. I'm just going to check around front again.
think we better protect ourselves, don't you? and then check the windows upstairs. No, call the police. What do I do? You don't do anything. You stick with your mother and you stay away from the windows. Get the windows in the library. Those drapes aren't done. Danny, it's locked. Great. Now, check upstairs. There's no drapes in there. Yeah, I know. Just lock the windows. Look, everybody stay out of the library. It's dead. Tony, it's okay. Danny, I'm just really scared, and I think I'm going to freak out. No, no, no. I shouldn't have sent you upstairs anyway. Come on. It's, just, it's not the same as it was before. You have a right to be upset now. I'd be worried about you if you weren't. Danny, I don't think I can deal with it. Yes, you can. You can and you will. What is it? Sorry, uh, everything's locked up tight. Tom, Barnett, he's gone. Oh, well, Danny, I need a valley. I'm really bad. Where are they? Uh, upstairs. Oh, damn it. No, I think I need one, too. You don't need anything, Puddin. I'm really worried, Dan. This is a very serious situation. Look, we're all worried, Lila. Sometimes you just have to make the best of it. I'd rather take a Valium. <laughs> Keep him out for a while. <laughs> Don't you think we should call the police, Leo? Never. All right, let's try to look at this thing rationally. I mean, they're obviously armed. They're completely unpredictable. And we have to assume that they're not, they're not going away until they accomplish whatever it is that they've set out to do. And under the circumstances, I would say that's painfully obvious. Right. Well, maybe somebody heard us scream and called the cops. It's quite possible. And if someone tried to call us, uh, they would discover that the lines were cut. No. Uh, cut lines and open circuit. The phone would ring, but there wouldn't be any answer. Shut up. Well, they're going to be wondering where Barnett is. They're bound to call here sometime. Now, the problem with that, sweetheart, is that could, that could be ten minutes or it could be four hours. You'd... And we've, we've got to get out of here and get help or... How? The only thing I can think of is that somehow I have to get out there to that car. I'll go out to the car. No, I can't ask you to do that. I can handle it. You should stay here with your family. 
What's that? It's a car. It is a car. Oh my God, it's a cops. Wait here. Oh my God, it's Leo Bain. Leo, get back into the car. Get the cops. Get the cops! I was worried about you. Leo, the men from the third floor are here. They have weapons. There's Leo, something wrong with your telephone. Leo, the men from the third floor are here. The men from the third floor. Leo! Leo oh, are they inside? Get out there! Out there, Leo! Great. I'll find them and we'll talk. Leo, they have weapons. Oh, my God! Dad, you're going the wrong way about this. These people are still disturbed from their escape. Leo, for Christ's sake! I want to get each and every one of them back into his space in time. Hey! Hey, you! Hey! Hey, you guys out there, this is Leo Bain. <laughs> Why don't you come out? We can explore a few things together. It's all over. He's out of his mind. Come on. This could be a very important time for us. Right now, let's use it. Try to stay open to what I'm about. Where are those Byron? Leo, there's Byron! Leo, Byron! Byron. 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 Right. How are you feeling, Byron? Oh, God, look at you. <laughs> Byron! Tell me, what are you experiencing right now? <laughs> Watch out, Leo! I'm so glad this crazy outside world <laughs> hasn't disturbed you. the Ten Commandments. But God said it. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I don't see anything. I, I don't know what to do. I mean, why is this happening? What do they want? It's me. They think that I killed Harry Merton. Who is Harry Merton? Harry Merton's the doctor that was at the hospital before I got there. Ray Curtis was trying to tell me about it yesterday. Jesus. Get him to the other room. Please, Tom. Please. Please, get him to the other room. What's that? 
What's he doing? I don't know. Frank! Frank Hawk, can you hear me? Please get into the other room. I know you think I killed Harry Merton. I understand your reasoning, but it's not true, and I can prove it to you. Dr. Merton is at the Winfield Hospital in Philadelphia. If you call them up, they'll tell you that he's there. I know that you believe in what's right, and you fight for it. But your facts are wrong. Will you call? You don't have to answer if you don't want to. You really think he's gonna call? I don't know. I don't know. Come here, Puddin. It's pretty hard to convince a paranoid schizophrenic that his delusions aren't real. I mean, he could talk to Merton on the telephone and still think that it was all just an elaborate plot to deceive him. What about the others? Yeah. It's Hawks. Hawks is running this show. <laughs> I'm getting sick again. No, no, you are not getting sick again. This is just your way of dealing with what's happening to all of us. Now, try to hold on. I'm trying. Look, you're not even breathing. Remember what I told you. Now, breathe deeply. Breathe deeply. Hopefully, we'll never have to go through this kind of stress again. Hopefully, he's right. I'm not kidding around. Who's kidding? They're in the basement. Sounds like they are in the basement. Into the kitchen. Daddy, there's a fire! Where? In the basement! Oh, Christ, it must be Preacher. Where did you put the fire extinguisher? We're not going down there. 
Where did you put the fire extinguisher? There was a fire in the basement. I would like to put it out. I want to put it in the window. I'm going out to the car, and I'm going to drive it up to the front porch. As soon as after I leave here, wait for 30 seconds, and run to the front door, and be prepared to jump in that car as soon as I pull it up. <laughs> Slide. No, I don't need it.
Karen. So. It's not just us crazy ones who kill. We all kill a doctor when we must. And we all die when it's time. Frank. Frank, please. Just don't kill my family, Frank. Just, just don't kill my family. Michael Kazin escaped from the Haven Mental Hospital during the first night of the blackout. Police report the search continues. For more on this, we have a special live report from Jim Gable at the Winfield State Mental Hospital in Philadelphia. Thanks, Cindy. This is That's the Harry Martin. Winfield Frank. State Mental Hospital with Dr. Harry Merton, former assistant director of the Harry Merton. Merton, Frank. Dr. Merton, you worked closely with the four escaped psychopaths during your time at the Haven. Is that correct? Well, first off, Jim, we really don't like to use the term psychopath. It's a label that isn't very helpful in terms of dealing with these people. We prefer to call them voyagers. The Frank. question in everybody's mind around Spring It's Harry Merton. A He's alive. He's well, it is true that at one time they had considerable difficulty integrating themselves into so-called normal society, but they worked through that quite some time ago in a rather dramatic way, I would say. But these men killed at least two people during their escape. Yes, and they were probably quite confused at the time. But uh, aside from that, I'm absolutely certain that the progress they've made at the Haven was so good. Thanks, Jim. This just in. Donald Gruber, Vice President of Columbia Power and Light, just concluded a press conference. <laughs> I guess we made it. Six dollar cover. Hey, asshole, you gotta pay to get in.
Well, my fiends, did you survive the dark? Were you alone? Did you have someone out there? Well, as long as you're watching Monster Movie Night with me, your host, and Boris, your co-host, you're never alone. Right, Boris? <laughs> uh, but are you safe? <laughs> That's another matter and another question. Well, my dear fiends, thank you for visiting us here at Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum. So, your creepy old curator and my co-host, Boris, we would like to say to you, stay creepy. And until next time, as always, keep screaming.